If you're old as I am, if not even older, you remember the glorious rail shooter genre. A genre that died thanks to Call of Duty. I only ever got to play a few real cabinets growing up, but the ones I did were Area 51 Site 4, The House of the Dead, probably a Time Crisis style game, and a dinosaur one. So whenever I could can play a good old rail shooter at home, I'm quick to get hold of it as possible. Sadly, Site 4 is still arcade only, and MAME is not exactly a good emulator, as it never works. Much like Xenia and RPCS3. More so Xenia. So today, we'll take a look at the first Area 51 for the PlayStation 1. Time to clap them alien cheeks. Area 51 is an arcade game released in 1995, when I was only one year old. So the game is 29, as I approach 30. Hooray! Anyways, the game is about you being a member of STAR, Strategic Tactical Advanced Alien Response Team. Area 51 is being attacked by the Kron Aliens. So you land on the runway and make your way into the base, fighting zombies, which are just human beings, mutated into minions for the Kron. Most enemies can be killed in one hit, though some require several, like the rocket launcher guys, the barrel throwers, who are the most annoying in this game, and purple aliens. I guess, uh... They have their own little Barney. You only have a maximum of 5 lives and 7 credits if you alter the settings. These will go by fast and once you're out, game over. Yep, it's still an arcade game. Get some cheats to counter this because the developer was stupid. They didn't think of, oh, it's a home console port. We should just let people play without restrictions like normal console games. But of course, this being Atari, they didn't make the right call. Shocker. Another BS mechanic is you can gain a power-up by shooting them throughout the game. However, get hit, you lose the power-up. Stupid. Yep, just like Virtual Cop, there's no reason to try and get the power-ups. These are just guns being the automatic machine gun, pump, shotgun, an automatic shotgun. I barely used any of them since one hit, you lose it. That's just stupid. Hey, hurry up. You, gotta go. you also have grenades, but I never bothered using them since majority of enemies die in one hit. Plus, there's a lot of explosives in the levels, like barrels and fire extinguishers apparently. The game is short and can be beaten in under 40 minutes, which I'm fine with as long as the game is fun, I don't care how long or short the experience is. After all, I'm not a woman. Based. The port is overall good quality for the PS1. After being out in arcades in 1995, we got home ports in 1996 for the PS1, Sega Saturn, and PC. The Saturn port is the worst with a lot of the screen being taken up by borders, but the PS1 version only supports controllers and the Konami Justifier. No support for the Namco GunCon accessory. Meanwhile the Sega Saturn like guns are all supported. I simply chose the PS1 version for convenience given PC games are notorious for incompatibility with modern operating systems. I just wish they didn't limit the player to a few continues and lives, since it's not like the arcade milking you for quarters are, is happening anymore, you know? It's a home console port of the game. But it is what it is. And if you don't use cheats, be prepared to die and start all over again quite often. And that fucking sucks.
at the end of the day, Area 51 for the PS1 is an okay game. It's nothing special and showcases the most basic of rail shooters. It features easy gameplay and also tons of BS arcade mechanics as to be expected. It does hold it back alongside the fact that you can't just keep playing, but I still do recommend this borderline average game. You could always do worse. You could play the broken PS1 port of Time Crisis, which doesn't even work for some reason. So give the game a shot, it, it at least works on like Time Crisis, plus for the PS1 there isn't much else in the way of options when it comes to rail shooters. Anyways that's it for this video, see you all later.